What's going on, Jerome's? So over the off season, uh, Minnesota Fighting Viking superstar receiver Justin Frickin' Jefferson was voted by the players. Remember, the players are supposed to know ball. Uh, Jefferson was voted the number 18 player in the league by his peers. Uh, this after being number two uh, in 2023. And it, it's, it was reasoned 5,972 why people shouldn't be allowed to vote on anything. Mm. Uh, but it, it's so weird. All right, so we... We, we generally rage against the machine, uh, especially when ESPN has their malfeasance uh, against the Minnesota Vikings. But I actually feel like they, they got this one correct. So the ESPN uh, staff put together a top 100 for the 2024 season, and they got it way more right than, than the players. All right, so first off, let's go Jefferson. Yeah, and then we'll, we'll backtrack on this. It'll be good. Uh, all right, so down, down in the earlier round. We're going, we're going down, swinging. All right, so Mahomes one, yeesh. Lamar Jackson two. Uh, Jefferson at three. Uh, this is what they wrote. Fresh off a $140 million contract extension that made him the highest paid non-quarterback in, NF in the NFL. Jefferson has reached a, a bit of a career crossroads, crossroads, crossroads. He's hit his prime just as the Vikings have moved on from quarterback Kurt. Cousins, the passer who threw blah, blah, blah. Uh, Jefferson might as well be the best receiver of his generation, but continued statistical dominance impact of the game will require a quick and productive transition to Sam Darnold, who will play in place of injured J.J. McCarthy. Signature stat. Uh, Jefferson has averaged 98.3 uh, receiving yards per game in four seasons, the highest mark in NFL history among players with at least 50 career games. Stat projection for 2024, uh, 106 receptions, 1355 yards, seven touchdowns. I always feel like Jefferson, like, he, he just needs more touchdowns. <laughs> as weird as it is to complain, all he does is not catch touchdowns. Yeah, but I, I feel like, you know, Jefferson at three, so I, I I get Lamar being up here. Uh, Mahomes obviously won. So uh, you know, this is much more accurate. And also the, the fact that this rating, this ranking wasn't discounted with the, the moving on from Kurt to Cousins. All right. So I actually kind of like that. Miles Garrett, four. Uh, Josh Allen, five. Jamar Chase at six. I, I don't know if Jamar Chase is six. Uh, you know, last year he was five. Sure. All right. Okay. Uh, but but also it was great. So Tyreek Hill was number one for the players. And remember, we had said, hey, I feel like the I feel like the the voting pool from the NFL players top 100 was just Dolphins and the Cowboys and Tyreek Hill. That's it, man. Uh, but Tyreek at eight from 16. He, he's, he's not one. Like, I, I get that Tyreek is special. I, I get that Tyreek is damn good, but he's not even the best receiver in the league. Not saying I'm just saying. Uh, Caffrey, Knight, TJ Watt, blah, blah, blah. So the, there are uh, two other Vikings on, on this list, which is kind of great. So Darisaw checks in at 97 ahead of Jire, uh safety help Alexander, which is great. Uh, this is what they wrote about Darisaw. Darisaw hasn't made an all-pro Pro Bowl team, but that eventually seems more likely after the Vikings recognized him with a $113 million contract extension this offseason. Uh, he has movement skills to block in space on screens and quick passes and also rarely needs help uh, from tight ends or backs when he is in line blocking. The only question on his future is injuries, which has cost him uh, 10 games in three seasons. And that that's the whole thing, too. Darisaw hasn't had a uh, completely healthy full season yet, but hopefully that changes. Uh, signature stat, Darisaw has had one of the best run block win rates, 77% uh, out of the Vikings offensive linemen in the past two seasons with a minimum of 10 starts. That's pretty easy to do. <laughs> uh, and Darisaw ended up as left tackle number six uh, in the rankings. Uh, now, <clears throat> dev guys like Rashawn Slater as well as, uh, uh, as uh, Andrew Thomas ahead of him on this list, which kind of get I, I understand but it's all right Darisaw will be climbing this this list Kurt Cousins checks in at 87 uh 2023 he was numbered uh 94 so a year older and coming off an Achilles and, and in a new system he moves up sure uh Stefan Diggs at 85 so 2023 he's number 21 yeah it's a bit of a fall off but like if, if Diggs is fine being wide receiver three, like he can be a huge asset for the Texans, but that's a big if because I, I do think that Nico and Tank deserve more targets than than Stephon Diggs. And also, C.J. Stroud ain't going to put up with any BS. So it, it could be a butting of the heads there in Houston if Diggs isn't getting uh, the work that he thinks that he deserves. We'll, we'll see you there. Uh, then you got T.J. Hawkinson checking in at 79, feeling fine. Uh, Hawkinson ranked 
second among tight ends and 95 receptions, career high, and fourth with 960 yards, uh, also career high in 2023. Would have been a 100 and 1,000 season, except for Derek K.B. Joseph. Uh, last year, blah, blah, blah. The question is whether Hawkinson will need only an extra few weeks or whether his absence could extend well into October. Wh- whenever he does return, he'll resume his role in an offense uh, that has targeted tight ends more than every team except the Chiefs over the past two seasons. Signature stat. Hawkinson has won three tight ends with 50 or more receptions and 500 or more receiving yards in each of the past four seasons. Kelsey and Dalton Schultz, uh, 2024 stat pro- projection. Now, this is baked in with him missing a couple weeks. Probably going to start uh, on the pup list. Uh, 64 receptions, 616 yards, and three touchdowns. It would be kind of badass if Hawkinson came in and put up a 1,000-yard season with only 13 games. Kind of nice. Wow. Uh, but, yeah, uh, glad that Hawkinson is recognized here. Uh, he ended up as tight end five uh, on this list. Uh, to, uh, nope, that's not it. All right, Laporta at 68, Andrews 64, Kelsey at 23. I feel like that might still be high. I, I know that he was 12 last year, but I, I feel like, yeah, I feel like Kel- Kelsey's reputation precedes him a little bit. And Kittle at, at 22. So, there you go. Uh, but, yeah, it's good to see uh, Jefferson uh, getting getting recognized here. Ooh, Fred Warner, 18. Sauce, Bosa, Stroud. Uh, Stroud of 15 after year after one year. I like it. Uh, Trent Williams still the left tackle one uh, in this league. I, I wonder if this holdout's going to extend to this, into the season. I guess it's possible. Yeah. Uh, CD at 11. So uh, at, remember, the, the players ranked C.D. Lamb ahead of Justin Jefferson on their list. Please, 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 please. But uh, again, it's very rare. And also it speaks to how good and transcendent Justin Jefferson is, where the national media jabroni haircuts, they're, they're always pushing their thumb down the scale uh, against the Vikings. So the fact that that recognized Justin Jefferson's greatness just speaks to how good he is. Uh, now, just imagine if Jefferson was on like the – like the Cowboys or the Packers or the Dolphins. It would just be like pfft, all over the place, man. But, uh, again, it's good to see some voting actually work out. Yeah. Uh, anyways, your thoughts are thoughts. Three Vikings dot the ESPN top 100, including an accurate, actually, uh, ranking of Justin Jefferson. Uh, let us know your thoughts, our thoughts, comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Once more the work, put a little something in the Venmo. But until next time, Skull Production Value.